beyond emotional today. I am beyond emotional, honestly. Today is Malia's third birthday. Right, Queen? <sighs> By this time, three years ago, I was like, yeah, she was born something afternoon, 12 something afternoon. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure because I can't remember the time but when I when I had uh, Raymond I was very young I gave birth to Raymond when I just when I was just 18 I turned 18 three months prior to his uh, his birthday or when he was born so it took us a very long time to have another child because because why not and then when I had Monachi, before I had Monachi, I had a miscarriage. I conceived a, a pregnancy, I got pregnant out of the blue moon, okay? Like we were not, we were not, like we are not planning for a child or we are like, we want another child, but we are not, there was no pressure, you know? It was just, if it happens, fine. If it doesn't happen, fine. So it happened, oh my God, I was like, I was, over the moon okay but the child didn't stay i lost it at 11 weeks and i was like i had never experienced child loss before and that's why i'm making this video because in today's society child loss is so normalized not normalized like you just you don't talk about it like if you if you lose a pregnancy at an early stage they are like, oh, it, be glad it was still early. But that's, that's because society fails to recognize the fact that once a woman tests positive, especially when she had a child already, and she knows what she's gone through to give birth to that child, she's pregnant with every inch of her body. There is nothing like, oh, you know, there's nothing like it doesn't matter. Once you test positive, and of course, of course when you want a child not maybe when you're testing positive and you don't want that's that's not what I'm talking about so once you test positive when you are ex an expecting mother or an expecting uh, person that's that's looking for for a, a childbirth there is nothing like oh let's see how it goes you're pregnant you're pregnant and especially because in most cases the early stage of pregnancy comes with a lot of symptoms so when I lost that pregnancy, I had all the symptoms, like all of it. I was not feeling fine in the morning, you know, the stretching, the feeling, everything was there. I was pregnant. I wasn't expecting that child to go like that. So at one point or the other, the doctor just told me it's no, it's no longer growing. It's no longer growing. And I had to have an appointment to have the pregnancy removed. That's, it's, it, it's, it's, it's the same like an abortion, but the medical uh, procedure is the same like an abortion, but it was a miscarriage. So, um, that, it was scheduled for a Wednesday and on a Saturday evening, I started having horrible pains. Like the pain I was feeling, I was, I didn't even know where to take myself to. The pain was that bad. And on a Sunday morning, my own, my own body aborted my own child and I gave birth to blood and blood and blood again there was blood all over the place i'm sorry i hope this is not this is not uh this is not a nice talk but it's the truth of life it's the truth of life and it's something that is not being talked about socially and it's it's a problem because when i lost that i went through this of course my husband was there but what happens after it it everything happens here like you can talk about it and talk and talk and talk the memories are still with me and it's been more than five years but it, the memories are so fresh and it's painful and you never forget that and we don't get to grieve socially because it was early right you don't even know was it a boy or a girl was it even able to live apparently something was wrong with the pregnancy so nature took its course I know all this I know the medical facts I know that that child wasn't supposed to happen I know but that doesn't change the feeling 
It doesn't change what you're going through. It doesn't change that in that moment I was sitting on the toilet and my own body was getting rid of my own child. And I had labor. I know how labor feels because apparently I gave birth to a child before. And it was labor that I had to be breathing. I, had, I was sweating. I was in fucking... I was in pain. Like, it was crazy. So, after that, when you're grieving and you ask yourself why, up to today I'm asking myself why because you know sometimes the the solution or the kind of eye opener happens after but in that case I just don't know why it happened but <clears throat> it is what it is so five months later I tested positive again and the doctors told me don't you have to get an abortion because for those of you that don't know, I have a renal failure. I have only one kidney and the function of that kidney varies between 5 and 60% at the most. So when you're getting pregnant, you have um, a lot more blood in your body than usual. I think it's up to 3 liters um, of more blood volume than before. Of course, the body has... A pregnancy is a medical miracle. We don't need to argue about that. So they told me I have to get an abortion because my body is not going to be able to give birth to a child at this current stage with my kidney failure. And me having lost a child just five months prior to that, I was like, I can't, it's not possible. I went to the doctor, I saw there was the heartbeat was there, the child was growing, everything was happening. I was like, I cannot abort something that's already with a heartbeat, you know, it doesn't matter how early it is especially not after I just lost one. I was still literally still grieving and I haven't even gotten over the fact that I just lost a child. And then you're telling me to go and abort a child for the eventuality or probability that my body might or might not be able to carry it just because you studied something for six plus years that gives you the permission to tell me that this is definitely not going to work. And then of course when you are a non-medical professional like me I have no idea about medical or about medicine or about whatever whatever you know I'm not a doctor <laughs> I was like I went to another doctor they told me the same thing you have renal failure you're not going to carry that child longer than five months pregnancy and everybody knows a child at five months pregnancy is most likely not able to survive so we were in between are we going to abort it and then try again sometime later or are we going to be like no this must happen because if it goes then it's not supposed to happen but me aborting something that I'm not even sure if it's going to be living or not seemed wrong it seemed wrong so after a lot of talking and I spoke to my because I have a like it's a kidney specialist that every now and then I have to go for checkup so he was like medically seen you're not going to that child is not going to survive your pregnancy three different doctors told us that the pregnancy is not going to work and then it exceeded 13 weeks it exceeded 20 weeks I was I was okay there was no problem the baby was growing we found out he's a boy four months five months that was in January 2016 I went to the doctor and every time I go to the doctor they will test my blood to see the kidney function how it's working so the last one I had it in December and my kidney function was okay it was really good for the case that for knowing the fact that I have a renal failure right so the one they did in January my doctor came back inside and was like Miss Chilaka I don't know what's happening to you I said how she sat down she said your kidney is working better now than it did in December and they were medically expecting the opposite to happen I was like how and then she was like your kidney function is as good as it has never been ever since I know you I was like how is that possible she said I don't know so I was like I just took it the next one in February it got even better my kidney function increased again so my doctor really was she was so confused she's a middle-aged woman she's like I think 50 something now she was like in all her life as a doctor she hasn't seen this before so she got curious so she started researching and there is a medical condition or a phenomenon you can have when 
you have a renal failure or a, an organ failure in general, the placenta of your child produces hormones to temporarily heal your organs for the time of the, of the pregnancy. And she, she knows my body, she's my doctor, right? So the next time I went back, because I went back every <clears throat> three to four weeks and then every two weeks, I went back in March, she sat me down and she was like, your child is a miracle. I was like, how? She explained to me that this is a case that happens, uh, I think one out of almost a million or something. It's a very rare condition. She sat me down and she told me, your child is healing your body while he's growing. I was like, how? That's not possible. She said it's possible. She explained what happened or what's happening to me. And then at 30 weeks, 38 weeks, Monachi was born through a C-section. 3,200 3, and something grams. Healthy, big, loud, loud, like loud. And when I saw him, when the pregnancy kept moving and kept growing and you know, you feel your child, your child grows. It's just the, the miracle of pregnancy, right? Every time I go to the doctor, I was scared, but the more the pregnancy progressed, progressed the less scared I was because I was feeling him. So if something was wrong, because I was timing him, so if I don't feel him for a certain amount of time, maybe I'll shake my belly or I'll put music on my belly, then he will move, then I know he's fine. They did all the necessary checkups. They found out he's, he's fine, everything is fine with him. And then he was born and the doctors in the hospital couldn't explain they couldn't explain it they had never seen that before because when before before you do a c-section they do a blood test on you they check my kidney function and that hospital i was treated there for a renal failure back in 2014 when my kidney completely failed and i almost died i had excessive calcium in my calcium in my body that um gave me heart problems i had water in my lungs and I literally almost died they treated me in that hospital so of course they saw my folder my file everything my data and they saw how good my kidney function was and the doctor that made the c-section the time he came to check on uh, Damian and me he came inside he said this is a miracle so my sister-in-law she calls Damian baby miracle because literally that's what he is so um Immediately Damian was born three days later uh, My kidney Started having problem. I had to take antibiotics because the function went down. I got an infection Which is normal for having a renal failure. If you have a renal failure, you always have kidney infections It's common So I had to be treated with antibiotics So the whole of my pregnancy and normally mind you every two to five months. I need antibiotics um, to treat an infection because the kidney function goes down and throughout 10 months of pregnancy, I have not been treated with antibiotics once. That is because the hormones, the placenta was producing throughout my pregnancy healed my renal failure for the time I was pregnant. Now, as if that is not miracle enough already, because that's absolutely insane. It's insane for something like this to happen out of a million chances. Um, and Mona was born, he was fine, nothing happened to him, he was growing, you know, everything was good, he, he became a baby, he started walking, he started crawling, um, when he was a year, I think 13 months, I tested positive again, and I lost the child again, at, uh, then at 9 weeks, then <clears throat> it was just like that what are you going to do you get over it you know with time and exactly five months exactly five months after i lost that child i conceived again and again i went to my doctor and she told me sat me down she said are you insane are you absolutely insane you know what happened the last time why did you get pregnant again and I've always wanted a child, a, a girl, whatever. I always wanted a girl. So 
I told her that three is my maximum. This is I just want three children and then I'm good. She was like, well, as your doctor, I'm still going to give you the same advice I gave you last time about that child before it will cost you your life. I said, I can't. It's not possible. I can't. So apparently we ended up not getting an abortion. And again, the same thing happened again. My, my body was healed or it's not healed. Like it was temporarily uh, stabilized by the hormones the placenta produces during pregnancy. And by the 1st of January, <clears throat> New Year's Day, 2018, we are still in Nigeria. I went for my regular checkup in Nigeria, in Oweri, with together with my husband, with Monachi, and um, and me, and my husband's brother. We went there and I was five months pregnant then. And that's when the doctor saw that the baby is going to be a girl. So we are like, how? And throughout my pregnancy, for the first trimester of my pregnancy, I stayed in Nigeria because the pregnancy was really hard on me because I was throwing up a lot and it was different altogether like the other pregnancies I ever experienced. So it was very different. But I didn't want to put my mind on it because I really had high hopes of, of having a baby girl. But I didn't want to put my mind on it. So when the doctor told me it's a girl, I was like over the moon and it was New Year's Day. So we went back to the house. We told everybody that the baby is a girl. And by that time you could already feel, even on my belly, you can feel when she's moving. So my, my niece was sitting in the parlor and she was like, okay, now we have to look for a name. So we are looking for a name, some days passed. So we are about to go back to Abuja. We sat uh, in the parlor, we brought our bags down. So Chioma, my niece was sitting next to me and she said, have you found a, a name for the baby girl yet? I said, no, I haven't. We haven't really, like we still have time for her to be born, right? So she was like, okay, can she suggest a name? I said, sure, why not? So she sat next to me, she said, Auntie, why don't you call her Chizaram? I looked at her, I said, what's the meaning of Chizaram? And everybody was in the room, my husband, the brothers, his sister, all the children, and my mother-in-law, and there was silence. Like, you know, when somebody drops a bomb and there's silence after, everybody was silent. I looked, I was like, what, what's, what's the matter, you know? So my, my other niece told me that Chizaram means God answered my prayer. And <laughs> that is how her name came to be. Because indeed, God answered my prayer when he gifted us a baby girl, right? So, and her first Hello. name is Malia, which, which means queen. Come. So now, why I'm telling you guys, because today is her birthday. How old are you? three today is her third birthday so not only do I have one miracle baby I have two miracle babies and because today is her birthday I wanted to share this story with you guys because it's so emotional to me and it's so it's so personal but at the same time even though it comes with a lot of pain and a lot of grieving and tears at the end of the day everything will be fine and if it's not fine then it's not the, not the end so sometimes it's just amazing how life twists or how life shifts to your own good but this is this is it this is the miracle of life and I, I want to encourage every woman out there, every birthing person out there, that if you lose a child, it doesn't matter if you lose the child at one day of pregnancy or at the end of the pregnancy, you have the right to grieve. You have the right to cry, to be sad, to be angry, to question life, to not knowing how to go further. You have the right to all the emotions and all the feelings you are going through because you just lost a part of yourself. 
and it's it's very much okay for you to take all the time you need to get over that or not even getting over it to learn to live with that loss because it's a loss no matter how early it's still a loss so we socially need to normalize people grieving for children they lost even if they weren't medically able to live because the medicine or the medical aspect of it doesn't matter in child loss and that being said happy birthday my queen you want to say bye 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 <laughs> bye guys